<laughs> All right. And uh, we, uh, 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 God has blessed us to see another month in this season. Uh, and that is June, June 1st. Uh, tonight is June 1st. And we are, we are back on course uh, in terms of our Bible study. We were, uh, before uh, the loss of our daughter, we were in a series of Ephesians. And uh, we had gotten uh, up to chapter 6. We got, I think, I think chapter 6. Uh, we had finished Ephesians 5. I just finished talking about uh, the relationship of husband and wife and uh, how, how God wants us to function as uh, kingdom husbands and wives uh, such that we can maintain our relationship as well as be a light to those who are in darkness, those who are trying to carry on. Well, uh, tonight we move to another uh, earthly relationship, and that comes from uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 1. And uh, we're getting ready to read about nine verses of that this evening. I uh, doubt if we get through it as if we travel the same pace and the distance we've been traveling in the past. We, we're not going to be going very fast. But, uh, hey, we take it as, as the word comes up. That's what we talk about. And that's the blessings of doing uh, 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 studies by the book, uh, doing series based on the book of the Bible. That way you cover everything. You don't miss nothing. You cover every scripture. And so that's what we're doing. Amen right now. So Ephesians chapter 6. This is about another relationship. Ephesians chapter 6. All right, here we go. This is from the King James. Okay, and I know other folks have other versions. And nothing wrong with that. But we still like the old King James. Cut my teeth on the King James. Cut my spiritual teeth on the King James. Hard to get away from it. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor thy father and the mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of heart, as unto the Lord, not with high service as men pleasers, but as the servants of uh, uh, Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service uh, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether it be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing, uh, threatening, Knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons uh, with him. Let's stop right there at verse 9 because uh, verse 10 moves into another uh, subject of discussion. All right. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. All right. E e e obey is the operative term that uh, we want to look at uh, right now. Children obey. Now, remember, we've been talking about relationships. Pardon me, I have to keep my whistle wet. Don't my old crusty voice. <laughs> that thing may give out in a minute. But uh, the operative word here is obey. Obey. Now, remember, we've been talking about relationships, okay? Kingdom relationship. I, 
I don't know if you uh, will recall before we had to pause. Uh, and 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 uh, uh, stop uh, for a moment uh, and give it over to Dr. Stokes for, because of our experience. But uh, before we were talking about relationship, we were talking about husbands to wives and wives to husbands. Well, uh, now we talk about uh, another relationship. And that is uh, parents to children, uh, fathers to children, okay, uh, and uh, parents in general to ch children. And Paul says here, as he still remember talking about relationship, uh, he talks about the relationship of parents uh, to children, okay, and how he starts this thing off is... Uh, Children, obey your parents, okay? Now, Colossians 3, I think it's uh, 23 maybe. Let's see if I can put my finger on, on it. Colossians 3, uh, 20. Colossians 3, 20. That's what it is, Colossians 3, 20. It says, children, fathers, um, say, say, um, Children obey your parents in all things, but this is well pleasing under the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children unto anger, uh, lest they become uh, discouraged. Now, here we have parents to the children, children to the parents, and fathers to children. Now, these are the relationships that we are talking about this evening. Okay, and uh, it, it, it says to uh, the children, now remember Paul is addressing the church. Paul is addressing the church, and obviously he's got some children in the church. Hallelujah to his name. Did you hear me? <laughs> There's some children in the church because he says, children, obey your parents uh, in the Lord, first of all, because this is right. It's the right thing to do, uh, to obey your parents, okay? Obeying your parents is something that has to be taught. You don't all, children just don't automatically come here and, and start obeying <laughs> uh, their parents. Uh, not only do I know that from what the Word says, but I know that from personal experience. We don't come here being obedient, okay? Don't have to, don't have to teach uh, uh, disobedience, but have to be taught obedience. And so he says, uh, parents, okay, uh, uh, or rather children, obey your uh, parents in the Lord, for this is right now. Paul is, is, is saying to the children to obey the parents, but in order for uh, children to obey their parents, they have to be taught what's right and what's wrong. They have to be taught what's, what, uh, you know, what's the right thing to do, okay? First of all, it's right to obey. <laughs> yes, it is. It's right for children to obey their parents. Now, it's assumed, and I think Paul is assuming here, that when he tells the um, children to obey and tells the parents to uh, train their children, that uh, he's assuming that, uh, or rather, even, even we can do that, that uh, these are parents that are in the Lord, and these are children that is being taught. Otherwise, uh, this would have no meaning whatsoever. So he says uh, to, uh, to uh, the children, children, obey your parents in the Lord. And then he says, why? Because this is right. It's the right thing to do, okay? It is the right thing to do children to obey their parents 
understanding that parents have been teaching their children. How can they obey? How can they do what's right if they haven't been taught what's right? Okay? And so he says to them, children, obey. Obey uh, your parents. Now, being obedient to uh, uh, children has far-reaching complication, com uh, co complications, not, not necessarily complications, but it has far-reaching implications. That's, that's what I want to say. It has far-reaching uh, implications. Our culture right now is reaping the devastation of family disintegration. Yeah, uh, because the, there's been such a breakdown of the family that society, society is reaping and we are reaping the consequences of it, okay? Uh, 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 we, need, we need Paul's timely words right here that we are looking at this evening, uh, his timely words for children to obey uh, their parents. Children play their own role in God's kingdom agenda. They are to obey, and not only to obey, but they, a little later on, you'll see it in the verse, it says, honor uh, your parents. Honor your parents. Uh, it says, honor your parents because, uh, you know, and to obey uh, because this is right. What does it mean to honor your parents? We, we know what it means to obey. Uh, because, uh, and he's talking about the word of God uh, when he says obey. Assuming that parents are teaching their children uh, what's right. They're teaching their children uh, not to steal. T teaching their children uh, not to tell lies. Teaching their children to be kind and considerate to other people. To be respectful uh, to their adults. Teaching children how to say yes, sir. No, sir. I, I, know, I know this is dating myself. But uh, we were taught those things to be respectful to our adults. You got to teach that. If you don't teach them that, they won't know that's right. Okay? They won't know that's what's expected of them. You got to teach them if you expect them to obey uh, what's right. And uh, you, you got to teach them how that they are to honor. Honor people who are in authority, okay? Now, I think it is with the uh, communist uh, uh, in the, those communist countries that, and of course, we are getting like that to a great extent, that uh, children are to obey and honor the government, okay? That's why uh, you can get bigger knots on your head from not obeying the uh, uh, police and those who are in uh, legal authority, uh, then you can uh, obeying your parents, okay? Yeah, the government uh, think that uh, uh, the children should obey them and not necessarily uh, their, their parents. But if they would uh, if reinforce uh, their uh, uh, call from, to obey uh, their parents, you know, those that are in authority, honor those that are in authority, okay? First of all, parents, honor, uh, yeah, those who uh, uh, expect to be honored, as the scripture says, uh, you know, honor the police, the, uh, the leaders in the community and, and, and persons such as that. But uh, it's more important that you honor your parents, those who are in authority, uh, over you. And so that's the first thing that Paul says here in chapter 6 as far as this relationship is concerned is that children uh, being kingdom children and kingdom parents that the children should obey their parents uh, in in the Lord. Okay. And, and he says he just didn't say obey parents Okay, but he says obey parents that are in the Lord because 
uh, chances are they'll teach their children uh, the word of God, okay? Because uh, all, all parents are not teaching the word of God, okay? Some parents are teaching their children how to go out here on the street and sell drugs, things of that nature, teaching them how to uh, 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 avoid uh, going to jail and all this kind of stuff, not getting caught. But uh, no, that's not what Paul is talking about. He's talking about teach parents who are in the Lord, who, who's trying to uh, uh, teach their children to do uh, uh, the right thing. He says, honor, in verse 2, honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment of promise. Now, when they get grown and... Uh, uh, they are now of such age where they leave home. They're on their own. They're making their, paying their own way. Okay. Now, uh, some folks think that uh, at that point they can uh, disrespect their parents and not do what their parents want to do. Now, that may be uh, uh, true in a sense, but it's also true that they are to honor their parents for life, you you never disrespect your parents. You obey them when you're a child, when you're being taught what's right and wrong, but you also honor uh, your parents in, 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 in uh, action and attitude, okay? Um, children are to submit to the legitimate authority of, of a parent because uh, their obedience is in the Lord. Now, when children obey, it goes back to like it, it, when we first started talking about relationship, okay? That, that uh, uh, husbands and wives are to submit unto one another as unto the Lord, okay? Uh, uh, wives are to obey their husbands, okay? in the fear of the Lord, okay? It's assumed at that point that uh, uh, husbands are loving their wives as Christ loved the church, okay? And, and, and just as it is with uh, 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 wives, who the scripture says, uh, wives, obey your husbands in the Lord. It, it's assumed that she's doing that because she respects God enough, okay, to obey what God is saying to her in the Word, okay? And if she's a, a, a doing that because she respects God and what God is telling her to do, well, then she's to do that, just as uh, the husband uh, is to, uh, uh, like the wife, rather, is to uh, respect uh, and, 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 and love uh, uh uh, her husband because he is loving her uh, the way the scripture says uh, uh, a husband loves your wife uh, uh, as unto the Lord. So all of this is done unto the Lord. Uh, husbands, you loved your wife as unto the Lord. Wife, you, uh, I'm sorry, husbands, you be the head as unto the Lord. Wives, you love your husbands as unto the Lord. Children, you obey your father, your parents as unto the Lord. And then later on, is going to talk about bond servants loving their masters. But uh, uh, I think the terminology would be more correct today to say uh, employees uh, obey your employers as unto the Lord. So all of this supersede is uh, is uh, un understood to be as unto the Lord. Okay, it's understandable that this is uh, putting God first. Remember, I think it was in uh, talked about it a few few Sundays ago. I think it was uh, Acts chapter five when uh, 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 several of the apostles. Uh, who was teaching and preaching God's word, and uh, they was teaching and preaching God's word, and and and, and the, the ruling authorities of that day was a Sanhedrin, 
uh, uh, leaders, and uh, they 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 captured uh, John and, and uh, who, who, who was that? Uh, Peter and John cast him in jail, told him not to obey. Uh, t told him not to obey. I'm sorry, uh, wrong terminology. They told them uh, not to speak any longer in in that name. Okay. And, and Peter and John, very respectful, obeying authority. But at that juncture, at that juncture, they said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, uh, 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 I don't know, you know, uh, 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 about you, he said, but uh, uh, we, we bound to obey, first of all, uh, the word of God, okay? That's the first thing is obedience to uh, the word of God. Now, if this conflicts with what you think and, and, and what you expect us to do as kingdom servants, he says, I'm sorry. He said, but we, our first, first obligation is to obey God. Now, I said that to, to, re, to, to reflect upon the relationship we're talking about this evening. The, even though he's talking to parents, fathers and the mothers and the children and, and, and the different ones, it's, it, the first thing is to obey God, is, is to realize that God is the one that we are bound to be obedient to, okay? Children, you obey your parents because it's right. It's, it's doing what God uh, expects you to do, okay? He said, it's doing the, the right thing. Well, I was on the topic a while ago, and I got kind of got away from it. But I was talking about uh, how that uh, today's uh, uh, community uh, is, a, is a reflection of children failing to obey the Lord and, and, the, and the parents failing to teach their children uh, the way they should, and it's coming out in in society and now. The culture is a reflection of it. Oh uh, yeah, the 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 culture is, is reaping devastation of, of family disintegration uh, because they have failed to obey and to do the thing which is right uh, in in the, in the in the sight of God. Now. That's the first, first uh, couple of verses of chapter six, uh, talking about the children and the parents, and honoring their father and their mother, uh, which is the first commandment of promise. Now, that that goes back to Paul knew the Old Testament. That goes back to I believe it's Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter five, I believe, Deuteronomy chapter five, verses verse sixteen. You'll find that again in the Old Testament, where the challenge to uh, family and children, parents is uh, to uh, children to obey, obey the Lord, and and it, and it gives the uh, gives the promise, give the, the command to do it with promise. Here, here it is. He says in verse three that it may be well with thee if you obey. Uh -huh. It may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth, okay? According to what God has uh, ordained for your life, he said that it may be well with you, and that you may live long uh, on the earth. And then he goes into verse 4, where he says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Father. I, I want to say something right here because I, I have often thought about this and, uh, and because I believe that book writers and people that, uh, you know, authors, books and things of that nature, even Christian writers have uh, failed to act with, uh, 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 accurately uh, uh, address this topic, and that is uh, 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 saying, t you know, writing on the topic of how uh, children should obey the parents and how the parents uh, should uh, teach their, uh, their children, train their children. 
of all the different things that are in this world that we have to deal with. I mean, from A to Z, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we have manuals on everything. We have manuals on anything you can come up with. We have manuals. I, when I got my first bicycle, there was a manual on how to put it together, a manual on how to ride it safely and all of this. And that was back, you know, been many years ago. But there was a manual on it. There's been a manual on everything. Uh, everything that comes out about an automobile, that, there's a manual on it, okay? And even to this day, right here in 2022, uh, that, that, that man, you can Google anything. <laughs> I mean, anything made it easy. You can Google it, okay? But I doubt very seriously that you can go to Google and ask Google how, well, some of y'all may want to check it and make sure uh, that I'm uh, saying the right thing. Don't I have to go back and correct. But uh, I, I, I don't think Google will tell you how to raise children. <laughs> Google, Google can't tell you uh, what to do uh, uh, the moment your child is born, okay? It offers suggestions about, you know, feeding, stuff like that. But I'm talking about how uh, to train a child so he can, uh, you know, uh, 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 grow to be a productive uh, member of society. I doubt if Google will tell you that. There's no book going to tell you that. And I think sometimes how we've neglected uh, to do that. Uh, and that not, may not be an accident, okay? It may be purposefully uh, done. Because if you ever uh, 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 get the manual on how to raise a child so successfully, our society will be a different kind of society. Yes, it will. Only thing we have now is, is, is the Bible, and it doesn't go into any detail. It just simply says, obey your uh, parents in the Lord, okay? That's all it says. I, I, well, I'm going to say any more about that, but uh, uh, we need to know how to, how to teach and to train our children uh, so as to exact obedience from them uh, so that they are, uh, their lifestyle will be a... Uh, reflection of, of the God that the parents uh, should be teaching them about. Now, it says there's a promise connected with obeying him. And if you obey him uh, the way he's asking, he says your days will be long, okay? Days or ordained will be, will be long. And he says, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Now, I, I must admit, I think I have been guilty of this over the years myself as parent, okay, uh, provoking uh, my children on the ramp. Uh, because uh, for, for one reason in particular, I did not understand and know the difference uh, between discipline and punishment. Hello, somebody. Anybody out there know what I'm talking about? There's a difference in punishment and uh, discipline. And I didn't know the difference, I, I admit. Oftentimes when, the children, when my children did something uh, that was wrong and uh, may have been so bad, I just got so angry and upset I just took it out on the child as opposed to being patiently in my discipline uh, the way Hebrews chapter 12 uh, 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 talks about how our Heavenly Father does us. It, it says He disciplines us. He, you know, don't say punish. You know, punish a lot, a lot of times is, uh, is our venting our anger and our disappointment uh, to satisfy ourselves as opposed to, okay, uh, disciplining in them so that uh, we're teaching and training them not to do it anymore, okay, and to do it in love, okay, and, and, and not in anger, upsetness.
but to do it in love. I think I missed that mark a lot of times, okay? Uh, as fathers, may have provoked, didn't encourage them, but maybe did more discouraging in, leaving, in, in living to be obedient than I did in, uh, in uh, encouraging. Uh, but he says we are to, uh, don't provoke your children to wrath. Don't upset them, all right? But bring them up in the nurture and the admonition uh, of the Lord. And I think this is, well, tell you something else that I think I missed the mark on in, in training children, and, and that is, and this would have been a part of the teaching and training and, and helping them to, uh, 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 to do what God would have them do, okay? This is what I should have been doing, and, and, and that is uh, when, when, I, when I made a mistake, when I did something wrong, go to the child and say, okay, uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I shouldn't have raised my voice, or I shouldn't have spank, spanked you. Uh, you know, just to say, I'm sorry. I, I don't know how many times I didn't do that when I should have been doing that, because that would have been a part of, of teaching and training, uh, to say, I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me, forgive dad, forgive me, mo forgive mother. I didn't do it right, but would you forgive? That would have been part of the teaching and training of uh, asking for forgiveness and saying I'm sorry, okay? Uh, didn't, I don't think I taught that very well. <laughs> and some of y'all may be guilty of that yourself. But uh, say you're sorry when you uh, did something wrong. Uh, make them know, don't, don't, don't let them think that you perfect. And that's the way old school parents did. You know, they never would say they're sorry. Never would ask the child to forgive them. Uh, uh, you know, it's as if they thought that was, that, was, that was being wrong to tell them they were sorry. But I think it was just the opposite. I think it would have been, uh, I think it's a means of teaching and training your child in a way God would have us to do it. And so uh, he told us to don't provoke, don't provoke our children to rap. Don't, don't, don't just make them mad and, and, and then go on off and leave them to themselves. You know how old school parents used to be, you know. Oh, y'all go somewhere and sit down. Uh, uh, this grown folk talking and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and <laughs> I remember some of the... Uh, Punishment it wasn't discipline. I remember some of the punishment that I got from my parents. Okay, and to this day, I I remember it. Okay, so I say somebody might say, "Whoa, that was positive," because you still remember it. <laughs> and, well, and that may be true, but I don't think that's what the Lord would have them do. <laughs> uh, uh, all that backhand that I used to get. I don't think God would have had them to do that. That was a better way of doing it. But anyway, thank God for my mother and my grandmother and those who, who taught me and, and they thought they were doing right and they thought they were obeying based on what God will. But we have to take a second look at this thing. And so he says, bring them up in the nurture and the admonition uh, of the Lord. All right, because we live in, in a day now that it is a reflection. Uh, children, it is re children's behavior is a reflection of the uh, times in which we uh, live. Amen. And look, uh, if you will, at first I won't try to turn to it, but look, if you will, at First Timothy, Second Timothy. I'm sorry. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3 tells us that uh, it gives us forewarning prophetically uh, how children are going to behave as we experience these last days. Then, going to verse 5, he says, still talking about relationship now, still talking about relationship. Uh, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Now, uh, before somebody get bent out of shape, let me hurry. They say, 
uh, uh, we, we, he, he, he's not necessarily talking about slaves and slave masters. He's not doing that, okay? He says, servants, obey your, your masters according to the flesh, okay? Now, this I think more accurately today in some of your more uh, recent translations will say this. We will talk about uh, uh, bond servants and masters. It will talk about employees and employers, okay, uh, that we are to be obedient uh, to them uh, according to the flesh with fear and trembling. Now, uh, here I think he breaks down the difference in in between saintly and uh, secular. Uh, he, he makes no difference, okay? Whether you, you're in authority as far as the spirit is concerned. I say, for example, pastor and member, uh, whether you're in the marketplace and it's uh, employee, uh, uh, employer, okay? He says to be obedient to them, okay? Uh, 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 with fear and trembling, Singleness of heart, singleness of heart, as unto uh, Christ, okay? And he says, not with our servants, service as men pleasers, but as uh, the servants of Christ doing the will of God uh, from uh, the heart. Now, that, that's, that's something that not only children have a problem with, but adults have a problem with honoring and respecting those who are over us. See, uh, uh, th those who are over us uh, in authority, uh, we are to uh, be a reflection of obedience as unto, the Christ, unto Christ. Now, when we obey as, uh, say, a member and, and a, a church member uh, and pastor, that's as unto the Lord. If we obey our, 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 our bosses on the job, our managers uh, in the workplace, and we do it, we are to do it as unto the Lord. Now, uh, here's what I'm talking about. Uh, when, when, when I know I know this is how I did when I was in the workplace. I wasn't necessarily a committed Christian, wasn't dedicated. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I was guilty of it. But... Uh, uh, when you're in the workplace uh, and, and the boss is not looking, uh, you, you go on and take your nap somewhere. Uh, you sit down and, 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 and goof off, you know, and, and not try to work uh, to be productive on the job uh, because, you, you know, you, you, you think it in terms of the secular, okay? Uh, this is secular and I can do this. This is for, this is for the... Uh, 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 the man on, on the job in the marketplace. This doesn't have anything to do with the Lord. I'm still talking about relationship, y'all. Uh, now, uh, but God says, this is what God says as it relates to the employer and the employee. He says you are to obey that employer as unto the Lord. Okay? Remember pastor. You are to obey the pastor as unto the Lord. Okay? Children are to obey their parents as unto the Lord. Those who have been given authority according to the word of God, you are to obey them as unto the Lord. Okay? Oh, they say, uh, well, uh, the boss ain't looking right now. I can do like I want to do. Okay? Oh, I'm just as big as he is. I can do like I want to do. Well, you got to remember uh, your service in these capacities as is as is to be done as unto the Lord, okay? Now, the, 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 you say, well, the boss ain't looking. <laughs> I can do what I want to do. But God is looking, okay? Uh, you say, well, I can say what I want to because he don't hear me. Uh, he's, ain't, he's nowhere around. I can think what I want, say what I want. Well, listen, God is always watching, Okay? And that's why we have to serve and obey as under Lord, whether it is the secular or whether it is saintly. saintly. He breaks down the distinction. He breaks down that line. 
of demarcation between the, uh, the secular and the saintly. Whether you own a job for Cleveland Clinic or whether you are in ministry at New Sardis, you are to do it as under law. Come on, somebody. Somebody hear me out there. You know what I'm talking about. You have to do it as unto the Lord. You know, whether you're working in the marketplace or whether you are doing ministry in the church, do it as unto the Lord because God is always watching. He sees everything. Hello, somebody. <laughs> and he says we are to do it with fear and trembling. In singleness of heart, when he says singleness of heart, that's what he's talking about. Singleness of heart. It doesn't matter who you're doing it for, who you're working for, who you're serving. Uh, uh, I mean, not serving, but it doesn't matter who you are uh, 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 committed to, uh, uh, who you have uh, determined that you are serving at that point. You do it as if you are serving on the Lord. That's what you have to do it, as if it's to the Lord. God is always watching. The Bible says his eyes roam, uh, roam to and fro. To and fro. He sees everything. And he knows when you're serving as unto him. And he knows when you're serving as unto yourself or as to some other uh, uh, unholy reason. Okay? But you got to do it with Christ in mind. I'm, I'm, I'm still talking about uh, relationships, okay? And if that relationship to the employer is as unto the Lord, if it's if you're serving as unto the Lord, okay, that is pleasing in the sight of the Lord. If you do it as unto the I, I wish I had this information a long ago when I was working on various jobs. Uh, I didn't know. I, I didn't understand this. I mean, every chance I got, I would goof off. <laughs> every chance I got, I looked for the boss more than he watched me. I watched the boss more than he watched for me, okay? Uh, trying not to do, okay, what I should have been doing. But now I know better. If I'm going to serve, I need to serve as unto the Lord. I need to serve as if I'm serving the king. Okay, no matter what I'm doing. And so he says, uh, not with our service as men please us. And, and that is, like I said, uh, you serve based on who you think is watching you. <laughs> That's how you serve. It's who you think is watching you. But God is watching you all the time. Amen. All his eyes open all the time. But as the servants of Christ, everything we do, it is as unto Christ. Did you hear what I said? Everything we do, it should be done as unto Christ. Okay? If we are his children, if we are his servants, we are to operate so that we, at the end of our journey, he'll say, well done good and faithful servant. Amen. That's how we ought to be serving right now in all that we do, whether we're on the job or whether we are uh, in, in ministry. He says, doing the will of God uh, from uh, the hearts, from our heart. Doing the will of God from our heart. Not, not as men please us. Trying to do something to satisfy a man. Man ain't got nothing to give you. God is the one that's going to bless you to get that raise. God is the one going to bless you, amen, to survive. And as well, God is the one that provides. You know what he says. He said just as he takes care of the birds of the field, he takes care of us. God is the one that's doing it. Hallelujah to his holy name. He said, with good will, doing service as unto the Lord and not under man. Do you, you understand that? You understand what he's saying when he says that? He says, with, with good will, doing service as unto the Lord and not under man. Whatever you're doing, you're doing it as unto the Lord. You ought to just quote that to yourself a few days till you get it in your spirit. 
get in your heart that everything you do as a child of God, you're doing it, okay, unto the Lord, that you might get recommendation from him, that you get may get commendation, commendation from him and not from man. All right, and the last verse says, knowing that whatsoever uh, good, whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you are a boss. It doesn't matter whether you're employee or employer. It, 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 it does not matter. Okay, doesn't matter whether you uh, 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 a member or, or, or a pastor. Doesn't matter, uh, you know, uh, whether you. Uh, let's see, how else can I put it in terms of of, of relationship? If you an authority over anything, okay, uh, back to relationship. If you do it as husband, if you do it as wife, as you do it as children, if you if you do it as a, a, a husband, wife, okay, doesn't matter. Uh, however you do it, if you do it as unto the Lord, you better believe God is going to reward you accordingly. Okay, it, 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 it's it's like this. It's it's not. Oh, how can I say it? It's not who 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 you who's you who you are, but it's whose you are. <laughs> if you be God, it doesn't matter who you serve, who you who you what what area of service service you in. Doesn't matter what ministry you in. Doesn't matter what job you on. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Whether you're going to college. Doesn't matter whether you're babysitting. Doesn't matter whether you got a hundred thousand dollar job a year, or ten dollar. Listen, it is unto the Lord, and God is going to reward and pay you accordingly. He said, "Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord." Don't matter. Don't matter. Bond or freeze, it doesn't matter. Whether you're the boss, doesn't matter whether you're the employer or you're the employee, okay? You're going to be blessed from operating with the right attitude and the right, uh, uh, what I say? The right attitude and, and the right uh, behavior, okay? That's right. It doesn't matter. You're going to be rewarded accordingly. Yeah. In other words, it doesn't matter whether you're the boss or you, you're working for the boss. Okay? You're going to be blessed anyway <laughs> according to uh, the word of God. And so it really don't even matter. Okay? As long as you got the right attitude, and, and 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 you can appreciate uh, God's word and and who you are and who God is. You're going to be blessed. Okay, that's why we advocate all the time, and I think Dr. Stokes was advocating this too, and some of the teachers there in this arts. Uh, if if you uh, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Okay, if you seek God and the king and his kingdom, and the kingdom of righteousness, that's what he says. If you do that, you know, he, he says, God says he's going to add, add, I add all these things unto you. And it don't make, make no difference whether you uh, work for the, uh, five dollars an hour or five hundred fifty dollars an hour. God said it, and and, 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 and and God owns it all. Don't get me to preaching up in here. God owns it all, okay? 
And, and, and you just need to do the right thing and do what God says. And he says, I'll add unto you. That's what he said. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And say, all these things shall be added unto you. Anybody believe what I'm saying tonight? Won't he add to you? Uh, Sister Burgess, good evening to you. God will add these things if you if you do his word. You got to do his word. Yeah, I mean, you ain't serving me. You ain't serving pastor, okay? Uh, you ain't serving your wife, your husband. You serving God, okay? And, and that's what makes the difference. Hallelujah to his holy name. That may, that's why people get upset and get mad. Listen, it's because you're not doing the right thing, okay? You're not doing the right thing by God. Man can't bless you. Man can't bless you, okay? But God can bless you. Do the right thing by God. Miss Taylor running around here putting up five fingers telling me my time is up. <laughs> okay, I'm getting ready to stop for y'all. I'm getting ready to stop. I'm getting wound up and she telling me to stop. Okay. And he said, in the last verse says, And ye masters, do the same thing unto them, forbearing, threatening, uh, knowing that your master also is in heaven. He's our master. He's our Lord. He's our king. Neither is there respect of person. Oh, oh, I need to come back to that next week. <laughs> Neither is there respect of persons with the Lord. If you do right, he going to bless you with right. If you do wrong, you can expect to receive wrong. But if he has no respect, to, I feel like singing that song. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. <laughs> and, what, and what's for you is for you. Okay? And uh, oh, what was the other thing I want to say? And then I'll stop. Uh, he said, what, 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 what he's done for others, he'll, he'll do for you, okay? If you do what's right, God will bless you. Nobody else can stop you from getting your blessing, all right? Do what's right by God. Y'all do what's right by God. If, if y'all don't hear me say anything else on this earth, y'all, if you want to be blessed, you know, do what's right by God. Hallelujah. You know what? Kim, I can almost testify for you, girl. <laughs> I could. Knowing where you come from and where you are, I can almost testify uh, for you. God bless you tonight. I'm going to leave you alone. <laughs> he has no respect to persons. He doesn't. But, but, but if you do right, he'll bless you. If you do wrong, He'll, hey, he'll get you too. He ain't no respected person. I promise you, he's not. Love you all. Love you all tonight. Love you very much. Good to be back with you. Uh, uh, on, on Monday night, we're dealing with the uh, Holy Spirit uh, and, and talking about the before, the past, present, and future. And we're going to continue almost through with uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians and uh, chapter 6 will be the last uh, that we'll be talking about as far as that's concerned. So God bless you. God keep you. And may he ever bless you. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for your holy word. And uh, we ask that you bless this Bible study this evening. And tr would you bless those who came on tonight? And would you speak to somebody's heart in a special way that they might be blessed tonight, that they might have a restful night as they focus on your holy and your righteous word. Lord, help them to know that you love them, no matter who they are and where they are, uh, uh, what they've done, what they're doing. Let them know that you love them, that your love is, is sound and sure and steadfast. All right? Uh, let them know uh, uh, through the power of your spirit. And uh, bless those that need you in a special way. And use what, whatever they're going through uh, to draw them closer to yourself. Don't let their uh, troubles, their burdens, their tribulations, don't let those things be in vain. But use them to draw them closer. Uh, use them to draw closer to you. 
And we thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. I ask it now in Jesus' precious name. And for his sake I pray, amen. Good night. Y'all have a great night tonight.